A federal high court sitting in Port Harcourt River State has reportedly barred Governor Godwin Obasaki of Edo State from participating in the People's Democratic Party governorship primary slated for Thursday, June 25th. According to the court document circulated to journalists, the suit was instituted by one of the governorship aspirants of the People's Democratic Party, Omoregye Obeide Ihama, who had vowed not to step down for Obasaki. He stated that Obasaki and his deputy Philip Shaibu should not be allowed to partake in the primaries as only those who purchased the farms during the stipulated window should be allowed. Abasaki has responded to this development, saying it is an attempt by fifth columnists to destabilize the party. Joining us to discuss this is Philip Obwesi, a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Good evening, Nigerians. We also have Henry Idahagbon, former Attorney General for Edo State, joining us via telephone. Thank you as well for joining us. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me. All right, let's get straight to it. Lots of breaking news from the APC today. Let's start with the <laughs> growing confusion over the interpretation of the court's ruling on Obasaki's participation in the PDP primaries. I I'll put that to you, um, Mr. Idago. Well, I don't think there's any confusion. We have seen the court ruling from the Federal High Court Port Harcourt River State. It was, uh, the order was made in very clear and unambiguous language. Uh, right Honorable Obede Yama went to court seeking for an interim injunction to restrain Governor Gordon Obasaki from participating in the PDP primary scheduled for this week, Thursday, 25th of June, on the ground that he didn't buy his form and they did participate in the screen exercise during the period stipulated in the PDP timetable advertised to all Nigerians some weeks ago. And the court granted the order as prayed, further order that the processes should be served on all the, there are about nine respondents. The first respondent is Uche Secondos, the PDP national chairman. The eighth respondent is Governor Godwin Obasaki, between the second and the seventh are members of the primary elections committee. And the ninth respondent is the uh, INEC. Uh, uh, the court ordered that the, the processes be served of them by substituted means, that is, through publication in two national newspapers. And the return date is tomorrow, Wednesday, the 24th day of June. This is very clear. No ambiguity whatsoever. And the implication is that as it stands today, this evening, as we speak on this TV program, Gordon Obaseki cannot participate in the PDP primaries of 25th of June, which is Thursday. All right, Unless let's... the order is vacated tomorrow or the order is varied or the interlocutory application is taken and rejected, Obaseki cannot participate in the elections or primary elections on Thursday. Let's get um, Mr. Obwesi's uh, position on this. What is your understanding? Of, because there seem to be some, even newspapers, uh, some of them will remove the publication because there seem to be confusion as to what does this ruling really mean? Hello? Yes, I'm speaking to you, um, Mr. Obwesi. Yeah, um, once again, good evening to everyone. I am amazed that uh, we are having uh, conflicting reports in a sensitive matter of this nation. More so when journalists and other media practitioners we are present in court. I wasn't in court. But I know that I monitored the situation through the media. And some of, uh, particularly one of the uh, very credible uh, online media, which he also reported that the court, Federal High Court in Port Harcourt, barred Godwin Obaseki from uh, participating in the primaries of PDP. Uh, the same news media uh, retracted that same report and apologized and issued a fresh one which suggests that 
Uh, the court actually refused granting that order or that relief and ordered the plaintiffs to, uh, to, to serve the defendants. So uh, I don't understand why something that happened not in, not, not in China, something that happened in Port Harcourt here, uh, would have uh, conflicting uh, reportage. It goes to speak to our, uh, you know, uh, our political, our political situation in this country. All right, let, yeah. let's look to what the suit actually um, uh, says. The, it was filed by the PDP governorship aspirants, as we already know, by De Hama, insisting uh, that Obaseki did not purchase the PDP form or undergo screening within the time uh, table uh, schedule. Uh, the sentiment is shared by Kenneth Imasuagbo. Um, we actually had a conversation with him, exclusive conversation. Let's see if we can just take a look at that reaction, and then when we come back, we'll get yours. Where is our conscience as human beings? Which church do we go to? Which mosque do we worship in? That we cannot even do the right thing. You're living in 72 hours to come and take a ticket of a party. And you want me to submit my 16 years of labor, of pain, of torture, of defeat, of tears, of Moments I don't, I didn't have money. There were moments in these 16 years I received shame. I received disappointment. And I'm not going to accept it. I'd rather die for you to take that ticket by force. It's not going to happen. We will not do it without the collectivity, the collective interest of the Edo people and the Nigerian people. I knelt down, they laid their hands on me, and they prayed for me. So what will I not tell Josh, a boy who's 11? He gave me, he said, well, I wish you were daddy. And they've been fasting and praying. Then I will not tell, take a phone call and say to them, look, I have stepped down for Pasek. See? Okay, that, that is an exclusive reaction um, on Plus TV Africa. We also had um, a commissioner in Edo State uh, for youths and sports, I believe, on our news. And he expressed a lot of optimism that uh, some of these aspirants are going to step down for Obaseki uh, when the time does come. After um, Ekihe, I think, also stepped down. What do you now make of these men who are saying they're not shifting ground because it's against their moral compass? I'll, I'll bring that to you, Barrister. Okay, we have two barristers, so which one? <laughs> okay, I'll bring that to you, <laughs> Mr. Obwesi. Uh, we'll come back to you okay. in a bit. Um, okay, okay. Uh, speaking sincerely, I would, not like, I would not want to sound as if uh, I am speaking for the PDP or Baseki. I have very little regards for these politicians because they are the reason why Nigeria is down the way we are today. If they have the capacity to jump from one place to the other, I mean, Mr. Baseki, and if Comrade Adam Sochomo could speak from both sides of his mouth, I have very scanty regards for all of them. But let's come to uh, the question uh, of uh, the PDP aspirant who said he's not going to step down. Uh, I think he's just saying that he's gone to court. Let him leave it at the court. We are lawyers and we have very strong regards for the court. The man is presently domiciled in the court. Let him allow the court take the decision. But as to his, the sentiments he's, uh, he, he's expressing presently, I take it with a pinch of salt. Oshomole expressed sentiments of this nature before, when he was campaigning for Baseki. Or Baseki expressed this kind of sentiments before, when he was campaigning to be governor. So the, himself, the, the PDP aspirant, expressing this kind of sentiment.
All right, let, let's bring in uh, Mr. Idago to um, share his thoughts. There, there, there are people who are saying that, I mean, ordinary citizens are wondering, why is the court coming in? This is just an aspirant. This is just an internal party matter. Why is the court coming in? What is the necessity? Please, could you clear that up a bit? Okay, please, before I do so, let me quickly say that uh, Malene friend who just spoke doesn't know Kenneth Maswagbon. Kenneth Maswagbon is a lawyer like the two of us. He's a very principled man, and he's a man that is as popular as Coca-Cola in Edo State. His alliance is a, a, a rice man, because for the past 20 or so years, every Christmas, he becomes a father Christmas for the sole purpose of giving rice to the common folks who otherwise cannot afford to have a decent rice meal for Christmas. And secondly, he, or he must have has not gone to court. So the sentiment he expressed here, and my learned friend saying he should wait for the court, that's not correct. The man who went to court is another PDP aspirant, a serving member of the House of Representatives. He's a man that is also extremely popular in Benin. He's the first House of Representatives member to win the election in Oredo Federal Constituency. For your information, Oredo Federal Constituency is the heartbeat of politics in Edo State. Before him, nobody has won the election. You do four terms and attempt to come back, you lose the election. Obede Yama won a re-election. He's on the second uh, term ticket now in the House of uh, Representatives. Both of them have been PDP members. Both of them have kept the party afloat when a lot of people deserted the party. So they have a right to be angry and they have a right to speak to their right to contest the PDP primaries and to resist any attempt to hijack the PDP ticket by a serving governor or uh, by who was elected under APC. Finally, on this call, let me say the APC candidate I met yesterday and he has uh, stretched the only branch to Governor uh, Gordon Obaseki. He left the party out of annoyance because he was disqualified. And he has said he should come back home. Okay, well, well, of, what, is of, what, of what importance would his coming back really be for him, politically speaking? Because uh, the, the APC has already uh, given out the ticket for the governorship yes. uh, my, election. Yes. My sister, he doesn't, he doesn't have to be a governor for a second term. He's been a governor already. We saw it happen in Lagos. Uh, Ambode lost his uh, primary election. He joined the party to contest and then handed over to Sam Olu, who is doing very well today as governor of Lagos State. On your question that why uh, are the courts interfering, the courts are not interfering. The courts are no Father Christmas. The, the, the court cannot interfere so much too. It is the politicians, like my little friend said, and he has little regard for them, it is the politicians who approaches the court and the court cannot shut its doors against anybody that knocks at the door of, uh, of justice. That, that is uh, contained in Section 6 of, of, of the Constitution of 1999 as amended. Anybody can approach the court. Once you feel your right has been, is being, or is likely to be threatened. So Obede Yama went to court because he feels that it's right to contest the PDP primary election on Thursday. He's been hijacked by Governor Obaseki. And let me, let me also uh, uh, say this very uh, uh, clearly. The court, as far as the Supreme Court has held, that political parties are bound, political parties are bound to, to follow their constitutions and their guidelines. When they issue guidelines, it is not for fun, they must be followed stricto sensu. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid there we're time There was time for collection of form. There was time for screening. This must be followed. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid we're really pressed. I, say. I, I get your point now. I'm afraid we're pressed for time. I'm sorry to interrupt as well, but let's just get the final thoughts uh, from uh, Mr. Obwesi. Your final thoughts on the matter. I, I think um, we are all in this together. Uh, while... The, there is a constitutional provision uh, uh, that uh, restrains, uh, that is speaking of uh, section uh, 68, sub 1, sub G, 
uh, of the Constitution. Um, uh, I think that Obaseki is free, constitutionally speaking, to move about, and that is the constitutional lacuna that they are exploiting. But uh, on the other hand, it will be grossly unfair on the part of the People's Democratic Party, unless for the fact that they have been out of governance for so long and uh, they want to eat from the national cake or from the state's cake, and they decide to accept Obaseki so that he brings in money. Beyond that, it will be grossly unfair for the PDP to, uh, uh, to deny tickets to those who have labored with them and stayed steadfast to them. I am not speaking this on behalf of the aspirants crying wolf. All right, because Mr. Abuasi. When they become the governor, they will still behave the same way. Mr. They Abuasi. They don't really care about any one of us. Um, so I, I, think, I uh, hope I wouldn't have to interrupt you, but <laughs> I, I'm afraid uh, that's the much time will permit us on the program. I want to thank you both very much uh, for okay, sharing no, your no evening with us. No charge from me. He said? Uh, what did you no say? I said, there are no, you are not giving me a opportunity to say my own passing word. <laughs> we're, we're out of time. You actually spoke. I gave you a lot of time, and that's ah, okay. why I gave him the last it's opportunity to speak. Correct. Thank you so much, gentlemen, <laughs> and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. All right, we'll take a quick break for our PLUS reports, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Just stay with us. Members of the Civil Society Network Against Corruption have staged a peaceful protest at the Lagos Office of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and submitted a petition against the Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Mudashiru Obasa. The placards carrying protesters who were received by the head of the anti-graft agency in Lagos, Mohamed Rabo, said they wanted the EFCC to investigate allegations of financial impropriety against Obasa. Speaking before presenting the petition to Rabo, the coordinator of CISNAC, Shino Odubemi, said the protest is informed by their mandate to uncover monumental corruption in the society and following it to its logical conclusion. In Lagos State, everywhere is awash with the, with the, uh, with the acquisition that the Speaker of the State the Speaker of the State House of Assembly is squandering money. Some even said he's swallowing money. But we are not judges. We don't judge people. We take, we pick issues and we ensure that we follow issues to logical conclusion. This is one of the steps. We have come here today to present to you our petition that contains catalog of allegations. But the truth is that these allegations, until they are investigated and until a court of competent jurisdiction rules over them, we can't say somebody is a thief or not. Thank you. I have received your petition. And in our usual way, we don't segregate. We don't discriminate. If there's any allegation, like you rightly said, allegation does not confirm whatever guilt. Uh, uh, the guilt of the person until well investigated and well established. So I want to assure you, like any other petition we are receiving, we will always receive, we will give it the required attention. We have a process here, this is the first process. We have submitted, we will go into it, and we will commence and let's go. The objective of coming here is very, very simple. There is a problem gradually coming up in town. There are issues on the floor of Lagos State House of Assembly. I'm sure you must have heard that recently the House of Assembly in Lagos State has been accused of mismanagement, embezzlement, misappropriation to the extent that the whole place is awash with this acquisition.
Edo politics as it currently stands is a sad, sad representation of what politics ought not to be. Unfortunately, this is a country where politicians work hard, in quote, to sell an impossible fallacy of a desire to serve the people. The unfolding scenarios in Edo State, as it is with most elections in Nigeria, is a rubbing on the face, the nottiness of talks about the people or service to country. Is it a personification of the negative fallout of the endemic resilience of Godfatherism or just the age-old fashion of using every means to chase power? I'll leave that to you. The APC and the PDP, as many have said, are doing a very poor job of showing the younger generation how politics should be. The youths in the game of politics today are learning all the wrong things, so much so that many will in turn see it as the roadmap for relevance in the Nigerian political space. Something needs to give. If that be the court stepping in to bring some sanity while Edel's tarry, so be it. If that is the case, the court should be able to rise above Bart, given the conflicting others that they've been known for since the advent of our democratic experience. As we watch things unfold, I urge young Nigerians to be wise. Do not become a footnote in the unfolding drama. And that is my take. Thank you for your time with us tonight. The program returns same time tomorrow. Until then, please be well.